Hello, Algebra students, and welcome to the lesson on completing the square. And here I have a quadratic equation that asks me to solve this equation by completing the square. And if you recall, there's a bunch of different ways you can solve a quadratic equation. Uh, you can do factoring. You can try to use a quadratic formula. You can try graphing. And completing the square is another way. Uh, now, in this case, we're going to do this both as a practice and to demonstrate the fact that you know here you, you cannot factor this equation there is no possible way to factor this using uh, integer numbers integer values it's going to get some going to give you something really weird and goofy and maybe even nasty looking if you try to factor this so we're going to do this problem by completing the square and also what's interesting about this problem is that the leading coefficient of x squared is not 1 it's something other than 1 so now uh, we have a couple different challenges that we're working with here. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just get rid of the constant term. or well, not get rid of it, but rather move it to the other side of the equation. So I have 3x squared plus 12x equals negative 2. And then what I can do here is factor out a 3, which gives me... 3 times quantity x squared plus 4x. And now if you look at this, and the inside of the parentheses here, I have a simpler completing the square problem where x squared is, uh, x squared does have a coefficient of 1. Okay, so this is a more challenging example from the start because it has that 3 in there. By factoring out the 3, I've effectively uh, made it into a simpler completing the square problem. And now you want to ask yourself, what number goes in here so that we can effectively complete the square? And if you recall, it's one half of this term over two. So I'll write this out here. It's one half of this term, so four over two, squared. Okay. And if you want to know why that is, uh, look back at, at to a, into another video uh, regarding how to complete the square. Okay. So we're going to uh, proceed. And um, I'm going to write this out here in one, in the next step here. 3x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, so this part right here turns out just to be 4. Okay. So it's got, it's a, and again, it's a very much a coincidence that these two numbers are exactly the same. It's just a coincidence for this particular problem. Now, what I neglected to do in the previous step is to balance the other side of the equation. I, you know, if you notice here, I just kind of introduced this new number in here. I just added a number in here out of nowhere. And, you know, that's not going to, that's not, algebraically correct unless we balance the other side. So normally we would have to add 4 to the right side of the equation here. Now it's a little bit different in this case because the 4 that we made up or we, or we added into here is inside of the parentheses which means it has to be multiplied by the term outside of it. So instead of adding 4 to the right side I have to add 4 times 3 so 12 to the right side. And now I can proceed. This is 3. And if we factor all of this, it's going to be x plus 2 quantity squared equals 10. Okay. And if you're interested in just the completing the square part, this is, this is effectively done. But uh, we can actually proceed a little bit further and continue to solve this problem. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I get x plus 2 squared equals 10 over 3. I uh, take the square root of both sides and I get x plus 2 equals square root of 10 over 3. x plus 2, whoops, x plus 2 equals negative square root of 10 over 3. And then I can add 2, I'm sorry, subtract 2 from both sides. x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 10 over 3. x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 10 over 3. And these are the two possible answers that I could have if I solve this equation by completing the square. Okay. And just to recap a little bit, the key step here in this entire process is the completing the square step where I take half of this number and then square it. But before I do that, I had to factor out the leading coefficient here so that I have a, a coefficient of x squared that's equal to 1. And that's my, uh, this is my final solution here. Uh, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to show you another problem 
you should pause your video and see if you can complete it on your own and then hit play and see and compare your results to mine. Okay, so here's another great example of uh, what you can do to complete the square and it's a tricky example um, and again you should hit the pause button right now see if you can do it on your own and then compare it to my solution so I'm assuming that you have tried this on your own now so I'm gonna go uh, fairly quick here as I present my solution so first thing that I'm gonna do is move 3 to the other side so 7x squared plus 35x equals 3 Factor out 7 from both of these terms, x squared plus 5x equals 3. Now I need to add something into here so that I can complete the square, and it's one half of this number squared, so it's 5 over 2 squared. And whatever I add to the left side, I have to add the exact same thing to the right side. But you got to be careful because this part right here is inside of the parentheses, the black parentheses here. So it's whatever you add here gets multiplied by 7. So in order to balance the equation, you're going to have to add 7 times 5 over 2 squared. Okay. And again, this is a little bit trickier, a little bit more work just because we have these fractions here. But... As we proceed, we can factor out. This becomes x plus 5 over 2 squared. So if you actually dispute, if you actually expanded this out and factored it, uh, this value right here, 5 over 2, that just becomes the constant term in the binomial. This is 3 plus 7 times 25 over 4, uh, which, well, let's continue. So x plus 5 over 2 squared equals 3 plus uh, 7 times 25 is 175. So 175 over 4. Okay. And I'm just going to simplify this a little bit better. Um, I want to add 3 and 175 over 4 here. So this gives me 197 over 4 equals 7 over x plus 7 times x plus 5 over 2 quantity squared. Oops, sorry, I didn't know I was writing off the screen here. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So this gives me x plus 5 over 2 squared equals 197 over uh, 28. And then take the square root of both sides, and this gives me x plus 5 over 2 equals, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use plus or minus square root for short, plus or minus the square root of 197 over 28. Extend this out here. Um, x is equal to negative 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 197 over 28. Sorry, I'm going to write this so that it's just a little bit neater. And uh, I can do some extra work here in the uh, denominator if I wanted to, but I think I'm just going to leave this as is for right now. Um, we can actually simplify this expression even a little bit further, but, um, but for now, uh, that's a different lesson, a different time. So now this is the final answer. So hopefully you got that. Uh, if not, uh, contact your teacher and ask for um, a better explanation. Okay. Um, and or you can also rewind and watch uh, some of the parts of the other video uh, and then see where you went wrong.